All right, guys, welcome to another episode of ARWP, the All Real Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Eric Novak of the Wrestling Republic, and today we have a very special guest. He is the owner, the leader, the man who founded Wrestling Republic, Ben Allison. It's great to be here. I'm super excited to be here on episode, I believe it's 101 of the All Real Wrestling Podcast. And I mean, that that in itself, Eric, that, that's crazy. Uh, that you've gone up to 100, over 100 episodes now. Well done. Well done on that one because so many people start podcasts and very few people get them past 10 episodes, never mind 100. So it, it's great to be here today. It's an honor to have you, Ben. And a lot of this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for you. So I am so grateful to have you on as 101. And I cannot wait for the amazing chat we're going to have. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. All right, so tell me, what started Wrestling Republic? So, originally, uh, I got back into professional wrestling. So, I was a fan of it as a you know, very young kid, but then I kind of went out of it over a few years because, uh, like, when I was very young, my parents didn't like me watching it. But then, around the age, I think it, I was 13, uh, it was 2016, uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 32. I got invited to one of my mates' sleepovers to go and watch that. And I went and watched it, and it hocked me right into it, right back into professional wrestling. And it's hilarious as so many people hated that WrestleMania, but that was actually what got me back into wrestling. Uh, but then a couple of months later, I think it was Extreme Rules, I was just, I was so hocked into this product, right? There was rumors, there was rumblings that possibly Seth Rollins could return, and I was just so excited by it. And I was like, I want my voice to be heard about this. I want to start an Instagram page, which in itself was hilarious, as I only created my personal Instagram page two weeks before that. Uh, but already I wanted to uh, I wanted to delve into the Instagram wrestling community. So I created, uh, I created the page, which is now known as Wrestling Republic. Originally, it was... Uh, originally, the, the page was called WWE Styles Fan for the first couple of months, right? Because I was a big AJ Styles fan at the time. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I got right into it that way. And I basically just kept it going from there. I mean, like I used to, I mean, all throughout school. So I think it was, I was 13 years old when I started it. And just every night I'd come home, post every morning I'd post. Sometimes I'd go into the school toilets and post. Just because it was kind of like a getaway from reality, a place where I could, you know, share my love for for, for, for professional wrestling, and that was just something to me uh, that I, you know, I really, really enjoyed doing. And then, yeah, it grew from there. Wow, that's amazing! So, when you started your Instagram page, how many followers did you have at the time? When you were just Styles fan page at the time? So, I think uh, the Styles fan uh, page, which wasn't like, it wasn't a fan page for AJ Styles. It was just, that was the name. Uh, it was it was all about, you know, wrestling. Uh, I think it got up to about 1,000 followers, if I remember correctly, in like two months. So, it did grow like quite quickly uh, at the time. And then, I, as you know, as it grew, I got into, you know, different types of wrestling. I got very much into New Japan Pro Wrestling as well. You know, as the name suggests, I went and watched some AJ Styles stuff from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and then I just got obsessed with Okada, Shibata, uh, eventually Kenny Omega, uh, and yeah, my group, my love for it just grew from there, grew to outside of WWE. Still, very much love WWE too, but I just I got immersed into like everything, and that's when I decided to change the name to Wrestling Republic. And I, I remember I had a long list of names. I think I had like 50 names I, I, I chose and I, I, you know, decided them down and I, and I can't remember what, what it got between in the end, but I decided on Wrestling Republic and I'm glad I did. That was certainly uh, the choice, I think, branding wise. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's basically what happened there. What was the decision process like? Were you talking to your friends, family? Was this just between you? I know it's always hard to make a, a decision for a name, especially a name of something that's going to last for a long yeah. time. So I'm curious who you spoke to that made you end up with Wrestling Republic. I mean, I did ask, you know, feedback from you know my mates, my parents, and all that. But ultimately, the, the decision was mine. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I've always been, and I was even when I was doing like that. 
I'll always listen to, you know, feedback and ideas and all of that. But if you know, I go with my gut and when my gut says, you know, I feel like this is a good idea, then that's when I go with it. So I got to ask, I love the go with your gut mentality. Tell me a story. Tell me a situation where you went with your gut, something that helped us in the public, something that was, you know, big, monumental. What was it that something you were really, you know, not sure this was a good idea, but when, when feeling your way, your gut was telling you, you went with it. I mean, probably the biggest uh, situation was starting the website, right? Because that was, I mean, straight up a very big investment. Uh, and uh, I did it in a way where I, I created, I, I created the website. I used, I used WordPress, I used like some templates, which I, you know, was able to find online, but still I had to alter those heavily too. So it took me a couple of weeks and I'm, I mean, I've got some experience with coding, but I'm not an expert by any means. So it was very much, you know, Googling, watching YouTube videos, all of that stuff. And still it costs like quite a lot. Hosting's not cheap whatsoever. Uh, and initially, I mean, straight up, the website in terms of, you know, the the Google ads, they aren't at the level which I, you know, I wanted that I've aimed for. Obviously, it's going to continue to go up. But because of, you know, because of COVID uh, and a few other things as well, ad revenue through Google ads on websites has gone down massively. So that back that actually backfired slightly. But what it did do is when I advertised for people to join, I get you know, I offered people writers a space to write and share their love of professional wrestling. And because of that, so many great, great people have joined Wrestling Republic, the podcast team, all of that. And we've all grown from, you know, the website right at the start. And the website is still growing now. Now it's more focused with reviews and opinion articles, which are performing very well uh, uh, as well with it. So, I mean, yes, that, that's the decision where I went with my gut. I felt it was the right choice. Was it the right choice in the way which I originally envisioned? No. I expected that to be earning more money than it currently is, but did it has it grown the actual business more than I thought? It actually has done, yes, uh, because you know we've got so many great people who've joined us through the website now, and it's evolved into something which is bigger than just the website, which is it's truly awesome. You know, you brought up COVID, and a lot of people are talking about how COVID may have been the worst years of their lives. I feel like Wrestling Republic really grew with COVID. Like you said, you got more yeah. home team. You know, what was your perspective through the COVID days on your end? Because, again, I'm in the U.S., you're in the U.K., very different, you know, situations. I'm curious what your thoughts were when it was COVID, when you were creating the, uh, the podcast, the website, everything. Yeah, I mean, it was it was tough in regards to, I mean, the U.K., the lockdown sure were a lot stricter than in the U.S., like for nearly a year, we could just barely go out. Like it was like brutal. Uh, but I mean, Wrestling Republic did help me get through uh, in many ways through COVID because at least I could focus on that. And I mean, of course, pandemic wrestling, you know, going back, it's very hard to watch. But still, it provided an escape in those difficult times. And I like to think that, you know, Wrestling Republic, you know, helped, helped that in certain ways uh and yeah we were able to pro provide content for people you know when they were stuck at home uh and in return you know it gave us all something to do which is of course awesome as well when you're just sitting at home all day that's true and you know something that i've always thought about was how things i believe happen for a reason and i feel like it was a blessing and a curse because as much as other things, you know, were ending, many things were opening. It was, you know, people created their own story through what COVID gave because that was the first time for everyone. And many people that I've interviewed either said that it was one of the worst things that ever happened to them, possibly one of the greatest things that ever happened to them. So it's amazing to ask, you know, which one was it for us? But I feel like everyone knows it. I feel like you made it clear that for us it was, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah. Something I want to know, something I'm sure the world wants to know, maybe all your friends know, maybe most of the rest of the public team knows, but I'm, I'm not in that bubble. I want to know. You start talking about being a WWE fan, then you go to New Japan, and I'm sure you, you know AEW is there and Impact's there. Who is your favorite wrestler and why? I want to know, I want to know what it is, who it is. Wow. I mean, this is something which just it's a it's a question which I very much struggle with. Uh, I mean, yeah. I I am 
I'm somebody who, you know, I grew I grew up as well watching a lot of British wrestling. So I am a sucker for the British style. And because of that, I mean, Zack Sabre Jr., I am a huge, huge fan of. So if I had to name one name specifically right now in terms of whose matches I enjoy the most, Zack Sabre Jr., I'm also a big Shibata guy and a big Will Ospreay fan as well. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. I'm gonna get a headline going. I mean, you know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna get the headline going here. Is Ben Allison saying the greatest British wrestler is Zack Saber Jr.? Is that what you're saying in your perspective, in your mind? I mean, I mean, it's very difficult because let's say if he went to WWE, I don't think I don't think his style would transition there as well as it does in New Japan, right? I think he's in the perfect place for him. But I, I actually, I actually think he's slightly underrated there. I think he should be the top, top, top of that card. Uh, but for me personally, yes, he's my favorite British wrestler. Interesting. And what were your thoughts when he did join the WWE for the Cruiserweight Classic? That was actually how I was first exposed to him. Uh, well, actually, I think I'd seen a couple of matches of his in progress, but that was when I saw him, you know, in a big way. And I remember Sasha Banks during that saying that. Zack Sabre Jr. was her favorite wrestler at that time, so she was very excited to see it. Uh, and I, I loved him. I really, really did. And I loved that entire Cruiserweight Classic because that was in like the first six months of Wrestling Republic starting, I believe, as well. Maybe even earlier than that. It was right at the start of uh, Wrestling Republic. So I was doing a lot of posts about that, a lot of covering that. Grand Metal League in that. I loved them in that. Uh, Kota Ibushi, too. I look back on that tournament and... Uh, I, I really enjoyed it so, so, so much. I almost don't want to go back and rewatch it because I think my memory of it is maybe better than it actually even was because that's how highly that I remember it. <laughs> I remember um, when we when I started the podcast, uh, me and Jason, um, we rewatched the Cruiserweight Classic and we actually talked about it. And in his mind, Zach Sam Jr. is his favorite wrestler. So we actually, you know, I think I think you should rewatch it. Because it was really cool, and we did it, and we talked about it, and it was a lot of fun. Cruiserweight Classic is once-in-a-lifetime like show, and I don't think they're going to do anything similar to that ever again. I hope they do, but I don't think they will. No, I, I agree completely. <laughs> so let's talk about autism acceptance. I want to know what that means to you. I want to know why it's important to you. I know what most people know, but the, my fans who are not familiar with you don't understand what you've been through, what you've gone through, and how much you prevailed. Please talk about it. Yeah, so I mean, if you don't know, I'm autistic. I was diagnosed, I think, when I was either four or five, if I remember correctly. But they knew from like when I was like two, because uh, I was developing slightly differently to you know other kids and, and all of that stuff. Um, autism acceptance comes from you know the old term, which was autism awareness, and pretty much everybody's aware of autism now. So acceptance is just you know accepting us. Uh, I mean. In, in life, like it's, for example, I'm currently in university. I need a few like small things such as I zone out crazy fast when if there's like a long presentation by a lecturer uh, or something like that, I, I zone out after about two minutes. Like that's, that's the truth of the matter. Uh, I also don't sometimes understand it when there's like super long, you know, instructions and stuff like that. So I just need something, you know, a little bit simplified. Uh, for me as well, uh, in terms of wrestling, I mean, Culture City, right? If you guys don't know who they are, they're a charity who work with AEW, and they are doing great, great things. I've spoken to them multiple occasions. They're great people over there. And what they do is, right, if you go to a wrestling event and you have, you know, sensory, you know, sensory issues, uh, then, you know, such as maybe the it's a bit too loud there or you need to step out because the lights are too bright. They have sensory rooms. They have, you know, headphones, noise cancelling headphones that, you know, you can wear. It's truly, truly a great company. And that's with me in terms of going to wrestling events. Uh, I, I do go to wrestling events quite often. But afterwards, right, I, I'm usually OK there. Apart from the only time which does get me is Pyro. I'm not a Pyro fan. Uh, I remember if, if you guys go and watch the Money in the Bank vlog, there's like two occasions where I nearly dropped my phone because of the Pyro. Uh, but I. I mean, yeah, at times I find it overwhelming at wrestling shows, but it's worth it for me. But what it means is then afterwards, I always have to make sure I have a couple of days to just relax because there's something called autism burnout. And that's when, you know, you 
you face so much sensory you know pressure and stuff for a long period of time where your body just completely fails on you so to prevent that i always make sure i have a couple of days to just relax after a wrestling show but i actually think when it comes to wrestling republic specifically i think the fact that i've been you know I, i'm autistic i think i think it's helped uh, i really really do because it's given me the dedication uh and it's a dedication i mean people have always said to me you know why, why do you spend all your time doing this and it's like one i can see the vision i can see what we're working towards but secondly i just love it so much it's you know one of the first things i think of when i wake up usually the first thing one of the final things i think of when i go to sleep i'm constantly thinking of new ideas for content new things you know we can do and it's just something that you know it's it's almost like an obsession like that that that's the that's the reality of it and yeah so i mean autism it makes life more difficult at times but at the same time, it's also it's also like I mean, people say what's oh, a superpower or whatever, but it is a strength in some places too. So it's just I fit in differently to the world, but there's strengths and you know weaknesses. I love the word you use. I love the fact that you said obsession. Obsession is such a great word for me because it just means you care. It means you'll yeah. do anything and you'll manage to be resilient, relentless, and that is perfect. I think everyone should be obsessed in whatever they do. Because that means they want to achieve their goals. That's what we do here. You talked about, you know, having autism and battling university when it comes to writing, you know, reading. I'm curious what university in the wrestling public, how that collides. Because, as you know, I'm also in university. I'm about to graduate. And I'm also a part-time, you know, I work part-time. So it's like there's so much stuff, especially while running a podcast, that, you know, I get myself burnt out like all the time so i want to know what it's like for you it's certainly a balancing act and it's certainly a difficult one i mean there are days where i i do just get very stressed very overwhelmed and all of that but i i have to think long term and yes it, right now i might have next to no free time when union wrestling republic are both you know on a lot but long term i want wrestling republic to you know be my full-time job so if that means for the next you know i'm going to my final year now myself so if this means for this final year i'm gonna have next to no free time then so be it that's gonna have to be the way that it is because i mean i do love wrestling republic too and i also i do love i'm a graphic designer in university I, i'm doing a graphic design course so it's two things which I like, you know, a lot. Now, obviously, both things at times have, you know, stress and pressure. But I just got to – and when when they both, you know, both align at stressful times in both of them at once, that's when it's, oh, a bit much. But it's one of those things where you just got to power through and, luck, you know, long term. Because long term, it's worth it. it. It truly, truly is. And, yeah, I just have to – I have to power through it. But also, I mean, stuff at like Google, Calendar – I mean, we're not sponsored by them, but, you know, we should be because Google Calendar is a lifesaver for me. I, I, I schedule out all my day, like, very, very specifically just so I have as much time as possible. Wow. You know, it's funny. You talk about graphic designing. I don't think anyone knows this. You are my graphic designer. You do the overlays, you do the thumbnails. If anyone loves those, shoot Ben a DM. You know, keep, keep adding to his many, many, many things to do in his schedule. You know, let him know how good of a job he's doing. And then I, I completely understand how it is. And, and I know, you know, at one point when finals kick in, you're going to need time to take breaks. I'm just curious how you're going to do it. You're a part of so much with Wrestling Republic. You're in the daily podcast. You do broadcasting with all your team. You know, how are you going to adjust yourself out of that slowly without making a huge wave? Uh, I mean, I mean, thankfully we have, you know, the, the, the daily podcast, Clark Taylor co-hosts it as well. And we also have people like Anthony Ricciardi, Shard, Kobe, who can also step in as host, you know, if, if things, uh, you know, needed, uh, and I do need a few days off the podcast, but I mean, I'm still gonna have to work it and, you know, every day on wrestling Republic, unfortunately I can't take a break like that. It's just, uh, unfortunately just not something which I can do, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And that, that's what I just, I've got to keep powering through. If I need a few days off the podcast at times, I need a few days off the podcast. But in terms of the creating the content, the clips and all that, it has to, it has to continue. So I just have to find, I have to find the time. Perfectly said. One thing, you know, I was shocked about was, you know, I read something recently that you wrote and it really brought to my attention. What makes us different than any other wrestling website 
And I don't think even by working with you guys, I don't think I even knew what it was until I read it. So I feel like you should tell the audience what does make us different than any other wrestling website. I mean, well, I mean, our entire philosophy is, you know, we're you know, by by fans, you know, for uh, you you know, we say we're fans, uh, for the fans, without the dirt, right? Uh, so I'll quickly break that down. That's our phrase: we're fans, uh, for the fans, without the dirt. So obviously, we who are fans, right? I mean, some of us have some wrestling experience. I trained as a wrestler for like like six months when I was younger. Uh, then other, you know, Clark, he's very, he's, you know, he's trained in martial arts for his entire life. So is Carter. Uh, and I mean that, yeah, several of us like have experience or whatever, but as overall we're fans, like we're not, we're not in ring competitors or anything like that. And that's a big thing about our brand. It's a platform for fans to share their opinions, right? Uh, we like to, you know, include fans. We like to have different opinions. We like to not argue with each other, but, you know, healthy debate, uh, with each other. And in the last line of that, you know, our phrase is without the dirt and we are anti-dirt sheet, right? And before I get into this, I just want to say I have nothing against the likes of Sean Ross App or Dave Meltzer. I've actually had, I've had positive experiences with both of them. I actually, I, I have, I've had positive experiences uh, with both of them. I, I like both guys, but I think that the way they report in terms of spoilers about, you know, returns, people coming back from injury. I truly think that they harm the business more than they, you know, benefit it. I really, really do. I think wrestling media is actually in the worst place it's ever been in. Because if you report all the things, you know, spoiling content, it takes away the best part of wrestling, which is being surprised. It's being shocked. And the entire thing of putting it behind a paywall, the argument is, and I, by the way, I have no issue with the paywall thing whatsoever, right? I have zero issue with that. People need to earn money. But... The, the their defenses or we're putting it behind a paywall so only people who you know only people who pay will see it so it, it's up to people like that is the worst excuse i think i've ever heard in my life because you know of social media these days that's gonna get out and at this point now i mean th there are certain return there's even a room of one return right now which i'm not gonna speak about about somebody who's been out for a long long time and yesterday, the one of you know some of the top news reporters just tweeted it. It's like that person's been working hard to come back from injury for well, well over a year, and you're just spoiling it. Like, what's the fun in that? Like, I understand it might get you a new sub few subscribers, but I, I don't get it. I, I honestly do think where you know, and even I mean, sure, we focus you know, on the podcast, on the you know, voice of fans, opinions, and all of that, and then news when it's official news, not rumors. News when it's official and actually news, right? We're anti dirt sheet, but I mean, a lot of these, a lot of these sites, I honestly do think they could be doing better if they just weren't reporting uh, s some of this, some of these dirt. And I mean, look at it. I mean, if we look at CM Punk, right? the entire thing with him and AW, who knows how it would have gone. But that entire mess is truthfully the fault of the dirt sheets. Like, it, it really, really is. Because it started with well, what CM Punk claims is, you know, the elite or Hangman Page going to the dirt sheets. And then by the end of it, CM Punk himself admitted that he went to the dirt sheets to leak stuff too. And it made that situation 10 times worse. And, and also the wrestlers involved who were leaking it are very much to blame as well. I just want to make that clear. But if they just had a conversation with each other instead of leaking it to the media, then I think I don't think we'd be in this position now where CM Punk is no longer with AEW. Uh, but but you know that that's that's in hindsight and and all of that stuff. But yeah, we're anti dirt sheet. We don't we don't spoil things. We just listen to the opinions of fans we give fans a place to share their voice and to just enjoy their love of wrestling right and long term hopefully that's something which you know wrestling promoters look at themselves you know they go to wrestling republic to see what the fans think of their current product their current storylines and listen they don't have to they don't have to listen to it at all but they can just share the opinions and then maybe maybe make a decision from there i think we're, we're doing something which hasn't been done in professional wrestling because nobody Nobody does it in a way which is fun like we do, which is listening to the fans like we do, but it's also spoiler-free like we are. So I, I do think that long-term wrestling republic has the potential to be the biggest 
and most valuable. I, I very much strongly believe that because, I mean, dirt sheets. I mean, dirt sheets have bad blood with a lot of people. Whereas, you know, what, what, the way we're doing things, I think long term, uh, I think there's gonna be a lot more partnerships uh, compared to a lot of our competitors, and that's. I'm not gonna go any more into that, but yeah, long term, I think our business model. It, it works a lot, and I think it's something which fans find very refreshing, and it's a place for their voice to be heard. I love that. I love that answer. That's you know, it's one of those things where you don't really know what you're a part of until you sit down with someone and you ask them the hard question. And I feel like you did a perfect um, kind of description of exactly what it is that I think the fans wanted to hear. The way you. You don't want to disrespect, but you also had to make your point in, in many ways with, you know, how you feel about certain things. And it's one of those things where dirt sheets do kill. I agree. Not a lot of people have, you know, what it takes to say that because they're worried that, you know, they'll get some kind of feedback against it. But it is what it is. You know, we, what we try to do is not what all these other websites are trying to do. And as much as how big they are, they are also the reason why the business is slowly dying. So I do love yeah. the way you said that. And, you know, something that came to my mind was the fact that we are growing, we are expanding, there are new listeners every day. And if people yeah. do want to start working with us, what positions are we currently opening? To what companies do we need writers? Do we need anyone on podcasting? I get requests a lot, a lot of people wanting a lot of things. And I'm curious for any new listeners out there, to message wrestling in public, you know, to message our Instagram, our Twitter account, even me, and I'll connect them to you on what we are currently, you know, looking for in freelance positions. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we don't we don't currently have any paid positions available, but we always, you know, have positions available for fans, you know, write write a couple of opinion articles a week, you know, get their name out, their strength from their own personal portfolio, while also, you know, being able to write articles for an audience as large as ours. Uh, so we're looking for opinion writers. We're looking for reviewers too, who can you know use our review system to review certain shows. As of this recording, NXT is one which we've been looking for a uh, you know reviewer for for quite a while, and that, that you know Impact as well is another one which is currently uh, currently open. In terms of the podcast, again, we're always looking for you know new personalities to you know come and join us on this journey. Yes, and wrestlingrepublic uh, at gmail.com, an email with if you're an opinion writer, a sample article, if you're a podcaster, some of your previous work, or just, you know, recording, and then we can set up potentially a meeting, uh, and yes, see how things, you know, go from there, but we're always looking to expand and to, you know, get more voices uh, here at Wrestling Republic, because again, you know, we are, we're, you know, with the fans, for the fans, like, that, that's the way it is, we always are looking for more fans to share their voices. I know this is going to get a chuckle, and I know it's not me because I'm not the one who really gives my opinion on a lot of things on social media, but the wrestling public is a very big team. I'm glad to be a part yeah. of you know the group chats that we have and, and get to see other people's personalities. Who is our opinionated social media you know, mascot? And I don't want to use that word as a dis disrespect. It's just when we do eventually get big, because we will, because we're great, and I do see the vision. Who do you think is going to be our guy? Who's going to be very like controversial, you know, with his opinions or her opinions? Well, it's quite funny because I mean, well, since since he joined us well over a year ago, Ignacio has always been the guy whose opinions are just so out there at times. They really, really are. But he backs them up so well. He genuinely believes what he's saying and he explains it. And once he's explained it for like five seconds, you're like, actually, that's a good point. And you come back, you know, I disagree with that. But uh, he's somebody who's, you know, certainly very controversial. Another one is somebody who's recently joined us, Brett Sternberg, uh, on the Daily Podcast the other day. Me and Anthony just completely drilled him uh, about him thinking that The Rock should beat Roman for the title. Uh, he's somebody who's, you know, got very uh, extreme views at times as well. But both of them are really, really great. Another one who, well, at the, the moment, who gets, you know, every opinion we post of his just gets so much hate comments is Clark Taylor, right? Which is hilarious as his opinions aren't even out. Like, they're not even that extreme. <laughs> they're just pretty standard opinions. But basically, he's done like, he doesn't like Cody 
when Cody just does like basic promos in a suit. Like that's just something which really annoys Clark. And he also doesn't like Dominic Mysterio. He doesn't like the Judgment Day. And he's given his take on the, these things, right? And those are probably his two most extreme opinions, which aren't even that that extreme, right? Because he actually likes Cody as a wrestler. He just doesn't like the entire suit tie promo thing. But he gets, because of those two opinions, he got so much hit on those two reels. And now anytime we post any reel of his, the, the, the people just flood the comments. And it's the same like 10 people flooding the comments with absolute hate towards him. Uh, and I mean, it drives the insights up, so he doesn't, he doesn't mind it at all, but it is just, uh, that, that is quite funny that he's somehow become the controversial one out of everybody. But I mean, the most controversial is Ignacio. I think down the line, there will be the, the one to make the mark. It's amazing because I do, I'm a big fan of Clark, I like his opinions and honestly, Anything that he gets annoyed about, I kind of wish to just keep doing it because it's just it's gold. I, I I love going you know on YouTube, listening to the frustrations that you know are so minor, but just if they keep doing it, it it's just it's funny. It's becoming a gag, which I love so much. Cody's tie clip. Cody's tie clip. That's the funniest one. He just rages about the tie clip. <laughs> oh my god! Ah, oh, you guys gotta check out the, the YouTube. You gotta check out the the daily podcast. It's it's amazing. They have a lot of fun stuff going on there. I love tuning in. Um, but let's talk about a little bit of a uh, little bit of news because this will definitely go up before hopefully most things. So let's talk about the first thing, and that is that you brought up with CM Punk. Um, again, you make all the thumbnails, you make all the overlays, you make all the graphics. So I'm sure people have seen it. It was definitely made by you. Um, there's a CM Punk one showing up at, uh, I believe, Survivor Series on the background, right? That's what it is. And it's against uh, like Stone Cold, I believe. Uh, that, that one's WrestleMania, the Stone Cold one. What's but there's mean? one which we've done with him with the, the title bag at the Royal Rumble as well. Both, both. what are your thoughts on CM Punk joining the WWE? Ah, so basically those graphics were created for Anthony Ricciardi's opinion article about why he thinks that CM Punk will return to WWE and why he thinks he should face Stone Cold at WrestleMania. I don't know if he will return. I think it's entirely possible. I think it's a lot, lot more possible now that TKO, you know, own the company, right? Or, you know, WWE's part of TKO, whatever you want to say, right? And that's for two reasons. One, CM Punk still technically works for UFC-affiliated uh, companies doing commentary for them, right? And those are on the UFC Fight Pass, which is obviously owned by TKO. So CM Punk technically already works for TKO, right? So they, I mean, it's entirely possible. I don't know his contract, but it's entirely possible. They say to Punk, well, if you want to do commentary, you know, commentary here, you can no longer work for, you know, any rival companies of WWE now that he's, you know, off his AW contract. So that might rule out Impact Wrestling, which when he originally got fired, Impact was actually what I thought was maybe the most likely destination if he were to return. Because not many people, not many people know this, but CM Punk is a big fan of Impact Wrestling, right? And I think he'd be willing to take a pay cut. He'd still be paid tons off Anthem, right? But I think he would be willing to take a pay cut in order to go to Impact Wrestling. But because of this TKO relationship, he's got a relationship with Ari Emanuel himself, CM Punk. I think it's a lot more possible here, you know, now for a CM Punk WWE return. Vince McMahon, though, is back involved in WWE, and his involvement, it depends on how, you know, how how much he's involved. It depends on who you ask, but obviously Vince and CM Punk don't see eye to eye. Punk got fired on his wedding day, and that's something which CM Punk, I don't think, is let go of. So I don't know. It's a difficult one. It really, really is, because I don't think he'd be willing to work with Vince again. I don't. So it would probably have to be that he works with, you know, Heyman or Triple H. Uh, and Vince really would stay out of that story. And that's why I really, really don't think that CM Punk would sign a long-term deal with WWE. I think if he will return, it'll be for one more match, maybe at WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia, a place which CM Punk does have a lot of links to himself. So it's not out of the question, but long-term, I can't see it working for him in WWE, but maybe one final retirement match, WrestleMania 40, I wouldn't bet against that. 
So you do believe WrestleMania 40, you would you wouldn't think Cien Buck will make his return to WWE? I think it's possible. I, I think it would be a one-off if it is anything, but I, I do think it's a possibility that I wouldn't bet against. Wouldn't necessarily bet on it either, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bet against it. But you don't think it's going to be Survivor Series? You don't think there will be any return from Cien Buck at Survivor Series? The reason I, I mean, it's possible, but the reason I don't think that is because on commentary the other day at an MMA show, he said his schedule is free for the next two months, which was just heavily hinting at Survivor Series. And if you know anything about CM Punk, when he does actually do something, he doesn't tease it. So the fact that he teased that made me think he's just trying to, you know, wind up fans, which it has done. It's worked. And he, he did it a lot before. Uh, uh, as well i mean who knows maybe he's now trying to throw us off by saying that but uh, i i i don't know we're gonna have to wait and see all right and in other news um one of the top female wrestlers in all elite wrestling has decided to part ways with aew and is on her way to the performance center i believe she's already at the performance center Jade Cargo. Depend, depending on who, depending on who you ask, she's officially she's left AEW and that she's been taken off the AEW roster page, and that's all we officially know at this time. I mean, from my thoughts, I believe she's going to be WWE bound. Um, I'm sure I saw some kind of dirt sheet that's saying from the center, but if that's not accurate. Thank you for clarifying that with me because I, once again, dirt sheets are killing the business. Who knows what's real, yeah. who's not, who's not anymore. But what are you, I know Clark's thoughts because I because I tune into the daily you know to the daily podcast. What are your thoughts on uh, Jake Cargill going to WWE if she goes to WWE? Yeah, I mean I I do think she will be going there, but in terms of you know when how we're gonna have to you know wait and see. My personal thought is, I mean I thought it was very weird how Becky Lynch won the NFC Championship last week against Tiffany Stratton. Obviously they have a rematch at No Mercy. I don't think Tiffany's winning back the belt. That's something which a lot of people think will happen. Shard and Drizzy both said on our NXT, our NXT post show on our Wrestling Republic, wrestling off the air last night, that they, they both said that they thought she's going to win the title off Becky uh, at No Mercy. But I personally think the reason Becky's won this title is that Jade Cargill's going to NXT and she's going to straight away take the title off Becky. She's going to come into NXT, win the title, and then be at the face of the brand immediately. And the reason for that is, obviously, she's already a star. She's going to be paid a lot of money, right, because she paid a, you know, quite a decent sum in All Elite Wrestling. So if she does go WWE, she'll be paid a lot of money. But I also think she's just, just slightly away from the main roster right now. I think she needs a few more things to learn, and she's very good at learning, right? Look at her when she came into AEW compared to when she left. She'd improved, like, She'd improved more than anybody else in that company had done uh, since that, you know, the company was founded. She, she truly, truly has. She's a star. And I do believe that, uh, I do believe she could be a WrestleMania main eventer. I really do. But I do think it needs to start in NXT. And I think she might just be going there and immediately beating Becky uh, to win the NXT Women's Championship. I mean, it is fascinating that AEW, you know, they gave her that really, really long title reign and then they ended it in a way which I hated. I really, really hated it. It got on my nerves a lot because they could have really put somebody over and they didn't really put Chris Statlander over the way they did it. They should have built up that match, but instead Statlander just beat her following a match which she already competed in. It was ridiculous. And of course, in the rematch, then Statlander beat Cargill clean, but... Even still, I didn't like it. Fair play though, if Jade has, if Jade's you know done, fair play to her to coming back and putting uh, Statlander over a second time before leaving again. But it is you know it's it's certainly fascinating why after all that she decided to leave AEW. And I I I mean you know we're not dirty, we don't speculate on it, but we had a pretty good idea that this was going to happen. But all the details, you know, I think that's going to remain to be seen and it's going to remain for Jade wants to say uh, long term. But I'm, I'm a big Jade Cargill fan and it's going to be it's going to be exciting to see whatever she does next. Awesome. You know, like I said, I know Clark's thoughts. I didn't really know your thoughts on it. But of course, I agree with you 100 percent. Jade Cargill coming into AW was a very different way she came out. 
She definitely showed a lot of growth, and I think she was definitely one of the people that in AEW that really took the lessons and and everything, just uh, the audience, and brought it into her own and made her own character. So I 100% believe she will one day main event WrestleMania if she's going to be bound and decides to pursue that to be as the next big opportunity. Another thing I want to talk about is, you know, a lot of good things happening in the UK. Uh, let's start with uh, Impact Wrestling. Let's start for Bound for Glory. That was not spent a while ago. There's going to be a tour coming in. Bound for Glory is going to be in Chicago, though. But it's going to be a special talent who's making his return, not debut, return in, I want to say a couple, like, decades. I, I, I want to say, I think, I think it's been uh, more than a decade. But um, the Commonwealth Kingpin, you know, the leader of the United Empire, Will Ospreay, what is your thoughts on uh, Impact getting an opportunity to have Will Ospreay showcase about for glory? I mean, it's always a good thing when you get Will Ospreay on a show. Like, it, it absolutely is. I mean, he is in the ring. He's one of the best in the world. There's no doubt about it to me. People have opinions on it, whatever. You know, people will always have opinions. Uh, and you can say what you will. But when he's in the ring, right between the ropes, he is just, he is so, so good. So I'm very much excited to see that. Bound for Glory, Chicago, you know, that's another place where people are speculating maybe Punk could show up. Uh, but, I mean, Punk uh, Punk Osprey, that would certainly be uh, an interesting one. But I, I am very excited for that. And, of course, their UK tour. I'm unfortunately not going to any shows because they've kind of done them all in very weird places, uh, very random places throughout the country. They've not... There's not one in London. They've kind of just gone all around London. I would have had to have gone two hours uh, from London where I currently am studying. And unfortunately, you know, with everything I've got going on at the minute, I couldn't go to a show. But long term, I love to attend a, an Impact Wrestling event. Yeah, I've attended a few. It's quite an amazing feeling, very different than anything else because they do things very differently. You know, when you come in, you're greeted immediately by talent taking photos, you know, it, it, it's very much a, a house family. And even workers there immediately will, like, greet you, talk to you. No one is in a rush. I've worked in independent promotions, and I've seen how promoters go crazy during showtime, during show days. And it's a very different feeling for Impact. And I've definitely enjoyed my time when I've been on Impact. So definitely something to check out. But interesting, though, you bring up a potential rivalry or opponent for a Mr. Osprey who's announced. Who are your three picks? Who are the three people you want or believe it's mandatory for them to book Osprey with? Because if you're going to have the talent of Osprey, we know most of Impact's roster. Who do you think is close to be that main event spot? The three wow. names. Uh, I mean, I in terms of a story, none of these are probably going to make sense from a storyline perspective, right? Because I, I I watch every Impact pay per view, but truthfully, I don't I don't often watch their weekly show, and I haven't watched their weekly show for a couple of months because of how busy I've been. But in terms of people, I'd love to see you know Osprey on a pay per view on a big Impact pay per view face. I mean, Chris Bay has to be up there for me. I mean that one. Oh, I'd love that. Ace Austin. Uh, is another one. I mean, Josh Alexander too. I mean, oh, Josh Alexander and Will Ospreay. That 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 is an instant uh, classic right there. The Impact Wrestling roster is stacked, and that that's the thing about it. They are really in a position where I think they are one. I'll say this: I think if Impact Wrestling were to bring in CM Punk, which I I don't know how likely it is, but if they were to bring you know CM Punk in. A lot of eyes would be on them, and a lot of people would see how great their product is because the product's already great. That doesn't need to improve, right? Uh, maybe, maybe sometimes production, whatever. Right? We all know there's sometimes production issues, but the the wrestling quality, the promo quality, that it's it's amazing. It's I mean, Anthony Ricciardi often calls it you know the best weekly wrestling TV show right now. Uh, and I think it's hard to disagree with him because every time I watch it, it is great. But what it's currently missing a lot of the time is the big newsworthy moments. And if they were to bring in somebody like a CM Punk, right, 
I mean, that would be a game changer for them. It really would put them back in the argument with WWE and AEW because people would watch the CM Punk and then stay for the likes of, you know, Josh Alexander. Like, it, it's they are really in a position where it's, it's disappointing more people don't talk about them. And I don't know why. It, it's because of, you know, they don't have... They don't have many like mainstream, well, they don't have any mainstream stars right now, really, apart from maybe uh, Trinity Fatu. But it's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating to see what happens with them next. But they have a tremendous product, so I'm certainly excited for it. Once again, I completely agree with you. Um, I believe what you're saying is true that if they have someone like a CM Punk. You know, people will stay for the Josh Alexander and then immediately fall in love with the roster that they have. And you bring up Trinity, which I think is one of the biggest things Impact has done, and it's giving them so much notice. I have seen so many people talk about Impact just because of her debut into it, and I think that was a perfect opportunity. So what are your thoughts on Trinity joining Impact over companies like AEW or, you know, Ring of Honor. So, I mean, it, it was certainly an interesting one. I mean, I thought once Triple H was back in charge, I thought both her and Sasha Banks were returning to WWE. Obviously, then Sasha Banks, you know, became Mercedes Monet and went to, went to Japan. At that time, I still thought that Naomi was going to return to WWE. But she did not. She decided to do something very rogue and go impact instead. And I, I very much like the decision, right? She decided that she wanted to help, you know, elevate a product, bring more eyes to a product. And I really, really respect that. I mean, there are certainly some casual fans who were big Naomi marks, right? Who are now watching Impact for Trinity Fair 2. And that I mean, that's fantastic. Uh that really is fantastic. Uh for for them so it's a great signing for impact wrestling well done to them trinity fair too i respect the decision a lot i really do yeah it was one that was very bold and i feel like it wasn't easy because it could have gone two ways impact is again not as familiar as you know the aew and the ring of honor and i'm sure she had a lot of opportunities to go to many places so seeing her on impact was just a very delightful thing and it's a huge plus for Impact, and that's why people should check out Impact, not just for her, but again, for all the other wrestlers that, you know, they have, like Chris Bay, like Ace Austin, like Josh Alexander. Um, you know, my three picks for Osprey um, would have been either Josh, Frankie Kazarian, or Eric Young. Those are three guys who I think, yeah, can, can hold. I mean, I'm an Impact guy. I'm an Impact guy. I watch Impact, and I thought those are three guys who – can easily have an amazing match. Even Eddie Edwards. I just feel like Eddie Edwards is oh, yes. in some kind of uh, insane uh, six-man or you know, or an Extreme Rules match. But I think Eddie Edwards has shown so much that he's been there, that he's for life of impact, that him and Osprey is a missed opportunity if they don't do it. So that is one. I, I think Impact has a lot of people that they can put for this tour. They can put for Battle for Glory. I know, it's a two, I know Osprey should go for two days. So hopefully it'll be a nice uh, two separate matches. But moving on, we got in New Japan now, and something I really love, and you know I, I saw it a few times. Uh, I, I think the first one for me, I think it was, I think it was still called Royal Quest, was when um, Birds of Prey fought EOP and uh, Ishimori. Right, I'm sure that was still Royal Quest at the time when they had a tag match when Robbie Eagles and Osprey were a tag team. And they, yeah, was that, yeah, okay. So, that was I believe it's, I believe so. If anyone, if I'm wrong, everyone will let me know. But I'm pretty sure that was Royal Quest. And ever since then, I have been a huge fan of Royal Quest because of the showcase in the UK and the amount of talent they bring in to make the show as special as possible. The last one had an insane tag team match of FTR and uh, Aussie Open, and now they're even doing a rematch at uh, Wrestle Dream which we'll talk about, but right now, Zack Sabre Jr. challenged Will Ospreay for the IWGP British Heavyweight Championship. I think that's what they're calling it, right? It might be wrong. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Zack versus Will? Because like I said, me and Jason talk about this a lot, 
And he thinks it's Zach. I think it's Will. They, I think Zach has won over Will. If I am wrong, I apologize, but I do think Zach has won win over Will. What are your thoughts on that big title match coming up? I mean, I wasn't even, I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't even aware that that was official now. Uh, I mean, I love it every time they compete against each other. Uh, I remember, I mean, I remember it was a couple of years ago now, I think, or it might have even been last year, where the, the G1 blocks came out and those two were against each other again. And I was like, oh, yes, let's run it back. Because every single match of theirs, every time you you see it, whether it's a New Japan Cup, whether it's Rev Pro. I can't remember if they've had one in progress or not. Every time they face each other, it's a banger. It really, really is. I mean, I can find out right now if uh, if, if they did if they did face each other in, in progress. But I mean, yeah, here, here we are. So uh, I've got it up. Uh, you have a list already? Well, I mean, you I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get it. It's, here we are. Here it is. So no, oh, so they did wrestle in progress in 2015. That's right. No, I do remember that one. And then they have faced in Rev Pro a couple of times since then. The 2017 one. That was, I think, that was the first one I watched between them. And then I went back and watched the progress afterwards. That was a banger. You had the 2020 New Japan Cup, uh, and then they crossed. They had that. They had that absolutely sick match. Then in uh, Rev Pro, just when things started opening up again. No, it was just before uh, just before everything went in lockdown in the pandemic, I believe it was. But yeah, I, I'm very excited every time the two step in the ring together. Who are your thoughts on who's going to win the title? Because I told you my prediction. I believe Osprey is going undefeated. You know, he beat Murafuji, and that I think even more implies that I think he's going to go undefeated until Wrestle Kingdom, until his big opponent. But what are your thoughts on who's going to win? Because, again, Zach, I think, has won over Osprey, and these guys have been battling since since the beginning. And it's always been an either-or type of match. So tell me what your thoughts are. I do think uh, Will Osprey is going to win, because I, I do think they're going to keep the title on him until... I mean, maybe I'm wrong here, but I do just still have that feeling that they're doing Omega versus Osprey. Uh, at Wrestle Kingdom again, I think they, they, you know, they've done two matches. They need to finish the, they need to finish the trilogy. Uh, and I mean, Omega's on a losing streak. Osprey's on a winning streak. That would suggest that Omega would win, but I don't see that happening. Uh, I do hope that they kind of keep each other separate. But yeah, I think they've only just changed the title, and sure, you know, it, it makes sense if they pass it to Saber or whatever. But I do think it's going to stay on Osprey for the foreseeable future because yeah, they've only just changed the name and done the angle coming out of the G1. It's funny because I can hear when you had to give your your answer on who won. I, I, I can see a little bit of you, you know, dying inside saying that you, you think it's going to be Will Osprey. Yeah, I I, I'd love I'd love Zack Saber Jr. to have more like singles title opportunities and just be a singles champion a bit more because obviously he held the uh, the the New Japan. I think it's. I can't remember the is it the TV title or the the New Japan World. Yeah, it has New Japan World on it. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's called the TV title. I think you're right. On yeah, it's right. yeah. I'd not run with that, but he deserves he deserves to be honest with you. I think he should be in the world title picture. I really do. He's he's New Japan through and through. I don't see why he's not being pushed in that main event position because every time he does get pushed, it's like a five star classic. A lot of people would agree with you, including myself. I think Zach more or less proved himself worthy of being heavyweight. And if I'm not wrong, I think he's currently the leader of the TMDK uh, of that of that faction. I, I feel like he, he's their leader. I don't think there's yeah. I mean, he he over. basically is. I I don't know if they officially have a leader, but he is the face of them. So if if there was, it would be him. So that's already a good sign for um for him having his own faction because that's something that happened with uh, Mr. Osprey and yeah, look at where true. he is now. I do feel like the only reason why people are looking at him as much, and it's no insult, is just the fact that somehow during COVID, Osprey freaking grew like enormously. And if Zach wants yeah. to make it, he'd have to do the same, but that would ruin everything about how he wrestles. Yeah. And everything. So really it's just it's a very hard picture, but something that will prove exactly how good Osprey is 
because a lot of people in, in Japan already know that, a lot of people in the UK already know that, but people in the US who've only seen Zach through maybe a few Ring of Honors and the Cruiserweight Classic will now see him in a in a better light. She's going up against Brian Danielson at Wrestle Dream. Now, for a lot of people, that is their dream match. That is a lot of people's dream match. And I've heard so many stories that apparently that was supposed to happen. Someone's, you know, car broke down or someone came late and they had to replace it. It was like back in the indie days, back when Brian Danielson was just the American, you know, dragon, things like that. I heard so many amazing stories that this match was supposed to happen at one point. It didn't. And now, hopefully, this match will happen. What are your thoughts on this? Who do you think is going to win? And let's not forget that Danielson was the first person who tapped out Okada. Okada only lost, I believe, twice. Twice, I believe, in the U.S. Yeah. Once yeah, because I think, I think Jay White was the other one, if I'm correct. Oh, so three, so three times. So, so, so I, might, I might be four. wrong. I might be wrong on that, but I thought, I thought that happened. Uh, but I'm, I'm very excited for it. And you mentioned, you know, it's the times it might have happened in the past. I really believe it was meant to happen all in. I really do, because of course Danielson got injured, and I, I think that, you know, ruined it. But I, I do believe that that's when it was originally meant to happen. I'm so excited for this. I really, really am. It truly is a dream match. My only slight concern is whether or not the crowd will be into it, right? Because it's going to probably be a bit more of a technical match. Well, I, I spoke about it earlier. Zack Sibber Jr., if he went to WWE and worked that style, it would not work as well as if he works in Japan. And selfishly, I really wish this match was in Japan. Or, or even in, you know, in like a Rev Pro in the UK because the crowd would be on fire for it. Hopefully I'm wrong, right? And hopefully at a Wrestle Dream, they do get the, 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 the crowd reaction they deserve. But I just, I worry that the crowd are going to be so into it at the start. And then when it gets really technical, it's just going to be a bit silent. Uh, and then people are, are going to be like, oh, this under delivered or whatever, because it is, it is slightly different to the American style. It's going to be a lot more technical a lot more. I mean, Ring of Honor used to do it. Don't get me wrong; they used to do that style. But in for arena crowds, it's it's hard to pull off. But if anybody's going to pull it off, it's going to be Danielson. So Danielson versus Zack Sabre Junior. I'm I'm very excited for October first. So it's only like a couple of weeks away. All right. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where, like I said, um, I agree with you 100. Like you. It's very easy speaking to because I 100% agree and there's no like rebuttal here. I know you have, I know on the daily podcast, people can always give a second opinion. And I wish I could think of like, how can I contradict it or how can I argue with you? But I can't because I agree. If Zach wrestled anywhere in WWE, with the way he's wrestling, people would get bored and they wouldn't enjoy it. And I'm also worried that that could be the same fate wrestling in AEW. His technique is very very exclusive he's on the ground he's technical this is a, a work of art and in order for so a work of art to be finished you have to watch how the painter paints and that's kind of similar to what it is you can't just expect you know immediately going into it that's the difference between him and osprey too i think osprey is like a straight up star you know immediately technique immediately robes and then zach is more of on the ground solely submission Similar to like a TJP and a Brian Danielson, you know, a lot of guys like that. So I agree with you 100%. I think this is going to be an interesting one. I think that because a lot of people are open to the indies, a lot of people, like there's a new audience, wrestling has changed drastically. And I think this will get a lot of attention. And maybe, you know, it might be the dream match a lot of people expect it to be. And I really hope it is. I don't want to look, you know, think about the aspect that people may not enjoying it, even though that is 100% true. I still am very excited for this match. And, you know, like I talked about, you also have FTR, Aussie Open, at Wrestle Dream. Man, I know we're getting through all of this, but it's amazing to hear what you have to say. And I think their first match World Coast was absolutely amazing. I don't know if they can any way bring it back twice. 
What are your thoughts on them doing a rematch like that? So here's the thing about it. I think it's going to be a fantastic match. But the difference compared to a New Japan Raw Quest show, right? Everybody at that show, I mean, that, that show was for that attendance. There was obviously, you could, I think, get it on Fight TV. And I think later then on New Japan World Up, it was mainly for that attendance. And everybody attending was a hardcore wrestling fan. So Aussie Open, FTR, their mouths are watering. Fantastic, right? Because we're hardcore wrestling fans. We love it. But an AEW crowd, right? It's not as much of a casual crowd as WWE, but it's still, you know, th their audience, it's still it's a bit more casual compared to the independents. And also they need to sell pay-per-views and all of that stuff, right? And currently there's a real lack of story in this match compared to, you know, a lot of other things. Not, I mean, they've been on AEW TV for quite a while now, but not that many people know that much about AEW. We always talk about it on the daily broadcast, right? Why Why should we care about this match? Well, like, what's the story? Why should we care? Why would, should we be invested? And we just haven't really been given uh, a reason here. So, I mean, I don't know how... I think the crowd actually will be on fire for it. I do, but I don't know... I don't know going into the show how many people... Uh, are going to buy the show to see it. But my hope is that the people who do buy the show for other reasons get blown away by this because Aussie Open are just so good. Like, it is crazy to me that they're not a bigger deal in, in AEW. And maybe this is trying to push them to that standard, but, like, tell us who they are because they're so good in the ring. Build a story around them because they have the talent. They should be at the top of that tag team division, no doubt. They should be facing FTR. Correct decision. But just give us a story. Give us a reason to care. Build them up. And don't build them up on Rampage. Build them up on Dynamite, where everybody's watching. Then once people already know about them, then sure, have them on Rampage. Have them steal the show on Rampage. But in terms of building new stars, that has to be done where the most eyes are, and that is Dynamite. So a bit of a rant about that. But yeah, that, that's something which AEW need to be careful with. They need to build these fantastic wrestlers into stars they need to explain to the casual fans who they are so then the casual fans are more you know invested into it because currently at times they do rely on the big names to you know to draw too much and there's exceptions to that they've done they've done it brilliant with brilliantly with rookie stocks mjf uh jack perry uh i think eventually sammy guevara too but outside of the four pillars and jade cargill the likes of ozio but and I mean, even this past week uh, on Collision, the workhorseman, I mean, there was, who are you, Chance? Like, that's not what you want when you do a stare off. But no. hopefully, you know, they just build some stories around these tag teams and this tag team division because Aussie Open are fantastic. Um, it's one of those things where I feel like it just came out of nowhere. I feel like it just won a match at Rampage and then just took on the mic and it said, FTR. We know we were IW champion, uh, IWGP champions as well. We were also Ring of Honor champions. We're going after you guys. And I did not like it. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to see these guys fight forever, but there needs to be a story. And I remember when New Japan announced FTR for Royal Quest, there was a buildup. There was buildup to it. I am happy, though, that I don't know if it was a partnering between New Japan and AEW's decision or it was just New Japan's decision, but that match is up on YouTube now for free, that full match. I don't know if you were aware of it, but it is. And I'm curious if it's because they want to show off the history or is it just, you know, like, see which one did it better type of thing. That's what people tend to interpret. Um, I don't know if I'm going too far into that, but I do agree that there needs to be a story. Uh, I feel like there was no story to this match. But I do feel like all four men will give it their all. And yeah. if you have never seen them wrestle live, definitely you have to check out this match. You brought up Sammy Guevara. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I am a huge Sammy Guevara fan. And I do feel like this is going to be – it's Grand Slam. It's New York City. I'm hoping they can do something here. Sammy Guevara versus Chris Jericho. This was, I think, all ending to this. I think this was all building up to this. And I do feel like there might be some kind of turn at the end of all this. What are your thoughts on Sammy versus Jericho? Yeah, I mean, presumably once this podcast drops, that would have already happened. So you guys will know what, you know, will go down. I mean, 
they need to do something with it because it's kind of been, uh, I mean, Anthony Ricciardi on the Daily Broadcast a few weeks ago, last week, made the reference comparing it to Ross and Rachel on Friends, where it's the will they, won't they, will they, won't they. And it was quite a funny joke, but in reality, it's also quite bad because it's gone on too long and Sammy Guerrero has become stagnant because of it, right? I'm excited for tonight, though, but I'm hoping they do it one way or the other, right? And I'm hoping the one way or the other is that Jericho either turns on Sammy or Sammy turns on Jericho because they... I'm all for long-term storytelling here, but come on, Sammy Guevara still is in Jericho's shadow here. And all the other four horsemen, I mean, none of those are in anybody's shadow. So, I mean, even Darby Allen isn't in Sting's shadow, and he's with Sting, who, with all due respect, might be a bigger star than Jericho. So it's it's one of those things where they need to they need to do something with Sammy fast because he's he's a young talent but he's not getting any younger so if you want him to be in a world champion material and a main event of your company for the next decade well you get you know you better get a move on with it once again I completely agree with you and I I do feel like it is like a Ross and Rachel type of thing and I do feel like there needs today needs to be the the end result, either either Jericho turns or Sammy turns. At the end of the day, you know, Sammy's a great heel. I think Sammy goes to be a great face. Sammy is is just yeah, he's, not, he's like you say, he's not getting any uh, younger, but like he's still very cruiserweight. He's still built cruiserweight. Um, he he did his work in, with the TNT Championship. I thought you know he made mo- a huge uh, moment with Cody on the ladder. That's a huge spot people talking about to this day. You know, I think Sammy did a lot of what he could. There's just so much potential there, but it's hard. It's hard to book. It's going to be really hard to book, in my opinion, on how they're going to do it. But Sammy's an amazing town. I've always been a fan of Sammy, and I do want to see Sammy do so much more. All right, Whew. one that I have been excited to talk to about since the very beginning: Cody Ibushi, Kanosuke Takeshita. This is this is one that intrigues me. This is one that I feel like. Though any independent wrestling fan, any you know New Japan fan, any DDT, Noah, anyone who's familiar with Japanese wrestling knows that these two people, these two men, are literally the future, the present of wrestling right now. So, what are your thoughts on Konosuke Takeshita, Don Callis? Obviously, this is a, like a, a chess game, and, this, and, and Kota Ibushi is a, a pawn to lead to Kenny Omega. Obviously, this is all leading to Kenny Omega. What are your thoughts on Kodobushi being a pawn in the storyline? I mean, I don't know if I put it as blunt as he's, you know, he's a pawn in it. But yeah, he's he's part of it, but he's not signed to the company. So, I mean, they've got, you know, I mean, it's, I'm not going to blame AEW for not, you know, having him as the end result or something because he's he, he shouldn't be. He's not part of the company. I think it's just going to, I think it's going to be a very fun match. I think it's, again, one which they haven't, I mean, they built up the rivalry between Takeshita and Omega fantastically. They've obviously had the match already. Uh, and, of course, this links back as well to the six-man uh, that was had at All In. But even still, I feel like they need to do a little bit more to tell this story before the pay-per-view. Today's Grand Slam, so I doubt much is going to happen today to do with that story. But I guess next week, uh, maybe Collision even. But they, they, need to, you know, they need to do something to build it up a bit more. But from an in-ring standpoint... This is going to be really good, and I'm very excited for it. Takeshita, I mean, yes, okay, Takeshita is kind of in the shadow of Don Callis at the minute, but I mean, I, I think he's in a better position than he would have been if he wasn't. So I, I, I don't agree with the complaints about that. I think Don Callis, Takeshita, I'm all for it. Let's see how this goes tonight. Not tonight, uh, our wrestle dream. It should be very fun. And now let's turn it to WWE, where I have a few questions, and then we'll uh, eventually end this interview, because I feel like I've already held you up for way too long. Um, Someone that I have always talked about from the beginning, that I said proved his main event material, proved that he should have been the one to defeat Roman, and that's Jey Uso, who, after watching, has such... Uh, a power over the fans. He is so over right now. It is the same hype that you know Daniel Bryan had at one point, and it's amazing to see a new generation of the underdog. Even though 
Sadly, he just did not be, get the wins, and they just moved him. It still makes the fans still support him. And I'm just like, okay, we're sick of it. You know, wasn't good enough, couldn't do it. People are actually really loving Jey Uso enough for Judgment Day to be interested and him teaming up with Cody, Owens, and Sammy. I don't I mean, it's amazing how it's amazing how WWE is using him and how he is like in the middle of everything. So tell me, what do you what are your thoughts on the whole Jey Uso and WWE now compared to Jey Uso before? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's very interesting, right? Because if you asked me for the last few months who I thought would dethrone Roman eventually, I would have said Cody. And I presumed that would be WrestleMania 40. Now The Rock's been thrown into the mix that, you know, maybe that wouldn't happen then. But even still, I thought Cody would be the eventual one, right? Because that makes a lot, lot of sense. But in this past week, right, obviously they've moved Joe so across to Raw now, but that's... I mean, I, I originally thought, and I still think, that that's to try and keep him away from Jimmy until WrestleMania and then do Jay versus Jimmy at WrestleMania. But this is the interesting part. Seth Rollins, the World Heavyweight Champion, is no longer on most of the promotions for Raw. And neither is the Women's Champion. On pretty much all the promotions of the last two weeks which have been sent out, the face of it has been Jey Uso, which is just, it's fascinating. Like, it's not, it's pretty much unheard of. They're trying to make him the face of Raw right now. And the fact that they're doing that, it makes me think to myself, hang on a second. I do still think Jay Jimmy is the direction for WrestleMania. But maybe the actual plan here is actually for Jay to eventually be the one to beat Roman. Because why else are they pushing him this hard in that way? Like, why is he on all the promotional material? That is to make his name goes more mainstream. So I, I actually think that Jay might, after all, be the one to dethrone Roman, which is not something which I've thought of. I, I, I did not think that would be the case. Uh, it, it does surprise me a lot, but I'm not necessarily against it at all, but it, 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 does, uh, it does surprise me quite a bit. Um, I agree that I haven't seen you know, them use Seth as much as they use Jay, and I do love that idea that you're bringing up. Now, to add on to that idea, do you think... Jay will be holding a nicely fresh title on his shoulder when challenging Roman at Mania? Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll happen at Mania. I, I think the Jay Roman thing will happen like 18 months or what, 12, 18 months. I, I think Mania is either Cody or, or Rock uh, for Roman. But I think Jay will be the one to beat Roman based on what's going on right now. But the title thing is a very fascinating question because I think it's be Jay Jimmy at Mania. That could have a title involved. You could do Jay versus Seth. That would be face versus face. I don't think that's the move. But there's somebody else on uh, on Raw who's been champion for quite a while and has made the title feel quite prestigious. And that person is Gunther. I don't know who should beat him for the title. I really don't. And I don't think Jay Uso would be a bad name. I don't. I, I think that's a match which would be, oh, it would be lovely uh, to watch. And I'm all for that. So maybe Jey Uso versus Jimmy for the Intercontinental title. My only issue with that would then be it wouldn't... I don't want to see Jay when he eventually takes on Roman with you know, you know having a title. Because I think we've already muddied these amount of title merges as, as it is, right? So uh, we're going to have to wait and see. But I'm enjoying Jey Uso. Main event Jey Uso on Raw. He's freshening, freshening up the main event scene. So I'm all for it. All right, and lastly, when it comes to the, the news all over wrestling, which I'm so glad that I got to sit down with you and get to hear all your opinions on this. Lastly is one that we did bring up already. The Rock has made his face known on SmackDown recently. That's right before – no, it's right after getting on the Pat McAfee show and giving some information that no one knew about, and that's the fact that there were talks, there, there were plans – and now people are really thinking if he mentioned this and then showed up on SmackDown, it's leading to something. So do you believe we will see The yeah. Rock versus Roman Reigns at Mania? Yes, absolutely. This entire Roman Reigns reign, they've, they've, I'm convinced they've always wanted it to, you know, have be, you know, one of the final moments of it be Reigns versus Rock with Reigns going over, and then once Reigns has beaten Rock. 
then the focus is, well, how do we get the belt off Roman? Who should be the one to beat him? How should we set that up? But I believe this entire Tribal Chief thing, that's the direction they're heading towards. It would be the biggest missed opportunity, maybe in wrestling history, if they don't do that match, right? Because there's so much money in it. Uh, WrestleMania Philadelphia would make sense for it, right? And here's the thing. The Rock spoke about it. He said it was meant to happen at 39, but they couldn't agree on a story. I don't believe that. I do not believe that for a second. What I do believe is The Rock is very close friends with Ari Emanuel. He's very, very close friends with Nick Khan. And of course, you know, he's friends with Vince as well. And he's got a relationship with Dana White for what that's worth as well, right? I think The Rock knew about this merger. I think he knew that it was happening, you know, a long time before everybody else did. I think they made the decision to go with Cody instead of Rock uh, at WrestleMania Hollywood so that at the first WrestleMania under Endeavor as TKO, it could be The Rock versus Roman Reigns. When The Rock has you know such a great relationship with UFC and Ari Emanuel at Endeavor, it, it would have made eh, it, it would be missed opportunity to not wait till this year. So I 100% think that's the direction they're going in. And also, the big giveaway is during the Pat McAfee show, uh, The Rock did turn around to the crowd and say, there is a WrestleMania coming up in Philadelphia. So uh, I, I do think uh, I think that is the plan. I would have liked uh, The Rock to have dropped a little reference to Roman on SmackDown, though. That was my one complaint about that segment. Even just something as small as when he was talking to Austin Theory, saying something just like... Uh, you may think, you know, you own this place, but this is the people's place, and I'm at, I'm at the head of this table, or just something little like that, and it's a play on words, and then, like, Roman Reigns could react to it the next week on SmackDown or something like that, or you just cut to Paul Heyman looking, like, intensely confused backstage, and that's it. Nothing direct to Roman Reigns, but just a little bit of a teaser. I think uh, I think that could have been a very fun, uh, you know, thing indeed. I think The Rock will make more returns to SmackDown this coming, and this coming uh, to, uh, I want to say, WrestleMania tour type of thing. But um, something that still I am questioning that you mentioned was they're winning for Endeavor, The Rock is winning for Endeavor, which, again, is a really interesting theory, which I could want to see going forward. My only flaw in this theory is that if they go big, how can they top that? How can you top going big? You know what I mean? Like, what is bigger than Rock and Reigns at Mania for next year? Like, like what what can beat that? Well, nothing, nothing can, but it doesn't have to. It just has to be something big as well, right? In terms of what can beat that, well, the WWE, EKO, will be hopeful that what can beat that is Roman Reigns versus maybe the next guy, maybe Braun Breaker in 10 years' time. But right now, you, you're not going to beat it every, you know, you don't, every WrestleMania main event doesn't have to beat the last, right? It has to be great, but it doesn't have to beat the last. Every now and again, especially at these milestone WrestleManias, like WrestleMania 40, you can do these big moments, Rock, Roman Reigns. I mean, we saw it years back with Hogan, The Rock. I mean, nothing's, you know, come close to that in a long while, has it? Uh, so... It is one of those things where it really is like once in a generation, you know, Cena, Rock was a bit like it too, although I think this is even bigger than that, to be honest with you. Uh, it's going to be exciting, but I don't think they have to top it the next year. I think that this is, you know, this is coming towards the end of the story. Maybe next year you have Reigns lose the title. Maybe you do it before WrestleMania that next year. Who uh, Who knows? All right, yeah, and that's everything for all the news. I appreciate you sitting down talking to me about all that. I do have, you know, two final questions. Um, the last one will be the future of Wrestling Republic. What does the future look like? Any new ideas that are coming? Anything like that? That's the last question. But before that, something that I've been waiting very to the end, right to the end. It was, it was so hard not to ask this because I love, you know, being self-absorbed. How is it like working with the myth, the legend, the talented, the one who, you know, never takes no, Eric Novak? How, how is it like working with that, you know, human being with, with wrestling in public, you know, him being late as always, you know, uh, not being the perfect human being that he is, but like just the resiliency of this man. How is it like being with him? How is it like working with him or having him part of the team? 
it, it's great having you part of the team. It really, really is. I mean, you're a top, top interviewer, uh, and you always, you know, you always get the big interviews. Uh, no, it truly, truly is uh, fantastic to have, you know, the All Real Wrestling podcast with you, with you on. I mean, we've had so many great moments. I mean, you know, from Will Ospreay being on the podcast, I mean, that was, oh, that was certainly a very interesting one. Uh, but no, it, it's absolutely brilliant working with you. And I'm, I'm excited for the next 100 episodes of the All Real Wrestling podcast as well. Ah, perfectly said. I appreciate that. Truly, Ben, it's, you know, it's so amazing from day one when I met you, hearing your thoughts, hearing your vision, automatically falling in love, and then my gut telling me, even if, you know, um, obviously no one's getting paid for anything. We're not, we're not there yet. I know yeah. we're going to get there. I know we're going to get yeah. there and we're going to the highest top. And that's by everyone putting in their 100%, everyone being obsessed with that goal. We're going to get there. So the last question, so this man can hopefully go on with his day because I've been holding him way too long, like I said I would, is what does the future look like for wrestling in public? Give the people what they want to hear. Any new ideas, any news coming, any new you know, podcast shows, any new writers to look out. We have such an amazing team. Let's give credit to, to anyone who deserves that showcase who's been putting in the work. Who needs a, who needs to be showcased out, and then also like any just new ideas that we got coming out, people need to check out. Literally, wrestling public is so big that people in my building know me from wrestling public. Like it is amazing to me how many people love us and are following everything we're doing. Yeah, no, it is it, it is certainly wild. I mean, when I I went WrestleMania this year, I mean. Somebody came up to uh, came up to me who's been following for years now, and that was that was really uh, that was really an awesome moment. Uh, in terms of what fans should you know be on on the lookout for, I mean, always check out wrestlingrepublic.com. Uh, and if you want to see articles as they drop live, turn on our well f- the thing formerly known as Twitter, now known as X. Turn on notifications on there as soon as a, a, an article is published on wrestlingrepublic.com. Uh, it'll be on there. The opinion team is killing it at the minute. They're doing a great job, uh, and th- there's also uh, there's also several new people who've just joined the opinions team too. So be on the lookout for their articles uh, in the upcoming weeks. That there's they're certainly going to be some top quality stuff. Obviously, I know a lot of people already do, but check out our our reviews uh, on wrestlingrepublic.com. They're the, they're pretty much the, either the night of or the morning after. Uh, you know, each show we do Raw, Dynamite, Collision, SmackDown, hopefully NXT soon, and of course, all the pay per views. Uh, because our, our system's a fair system, right? It's a system which uh, me and Kobe Galandowski created, and we did it in a way that to eliminate as much bias as possible, right? Uh, we use a really strict system, and most people, like for example, Dave Meltzer, and this isn't me criticizing him, this is his opinion, which is more than valid is uh, when his star rating system is just like whatever he feels. So he, he, it's just it's like a feeling for him whether our, 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 our star rating system is actually, you know, based on, you know, it's just like a checklist type thing, right? There's a rubric for it. And we're very transparent with it too, right? You can click on the bottom of any review and I'll take you to a link where you can see our system. You can see our rubric. So we're not trying to hide things. We're very transparent. You can see what you know we think makes a perfect wrestling match. So always make sure to check out our reviews. In terms of new content, we've always got stuff you know in the work. We've already gotten stuff in the work for next summer. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say you know what it is yet. But we're uh, we're all we you know we've got we've got stuff in the work. Right? We've got we got a lot of ideas. We're going to keep making content for you guys. If you guys ever have some suggestions, you want to see certain things from us, make sure to just contact us, right? We we literally see like oh, pretty much all the DMs. Uh, so just contact the Wrestling Republic Instagram page because even if we don't always reply, we always see them. Uh, or just comment it on the page too and just at us and, uh, you know, th- that'll get seen for sure because we love to, you know, get feedback from you guys because like we say, you know, we're with fans for the fans, right? So... 
we're going to listen to the fans' voice. We're going to do what the fans want. If the fans, you know, if they want to submit an opinion to, you know, get out there anonymously, we do anonymous opinions. We're always looking at ways for fans' voices, right? Not just us, but fans' voices to get heard, you know, uh, to a louder audience. And then hopefully, you know, maybe some wrestling promotions, you know, ha have a think about what they're doing uh, or, or, you know, consider taking some advice on board. Because, I mean, the voice of fans, it, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, like every wrestling company is meant to be for the fans. And to Wrestling Republic, we're providing a voice for the fans. In terms of, you know, the long-term future for Wrestling Republic, I mean, I've already said it, but I really do think we're going to be the most valuable, biggest wrestling media site. And I think it's going to, I think in the next few years, we're going to surprise people. Perfectly said. How can people follow Ben Allison? How do we follow Wrestling Republic? I know you just plugged in a bunch of stuff, but let's plug in one more time all the main social media accounts. Obviously, you already talked about the website. But bring up anything you want to bring up. And I'm, I'm seeing you're rocking a little bit of a Wrestling Republic merch. I see. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not lost in the mail at the moment. Yeah, hopefully I'll get it soon. But uh, are we are we producing merch soon, Ben? We are working on it. Uh, we've been working on it for a while now, but there's... There's a few, uh, there's if it's a little bit, we want to make it good, like that, that's the thing about it. We want to make it good, and there are, you know, there are a couple of people, you know, suppliers and production manufacturers who might uh, be interested. Uh, so you know, it, it's about negotiating, seeing if we can find out something which we're happy with, then about production. It, it, we could, I mean, listen, we could open up, you know, a red bubble site tonight and then do it off there but we want to do it you know the best we can with the highest quality we can we want to do it the right way uh and yeah so i mean absolutely we, we've got to do it soon because the people are asking for it as well it, it has to be done because currently like before shows uh we just we just print merch at local print shops to you know to take so we could you know uh grill a marketing basically but uh in terms of where you can follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Republic, over 60k strong now, but also YouTube. That's where we're trying to grow. Wrestling Republic on YouTube. We're live there, eight usually 8 p.m. Uh, UK time, 3 p.m. Eastern and 12 p.m. Pacific each day for Wrestling Republic's daily broadcast. It's always scheduled ahead of time. So if there is any time changes, you can see if you just you know go there a couple of hours early, it's, it'll always be there. Uh, then Twitter dash X were at Wrestling Republic because Wrestling Republic doesn't fit. Uh, it's, it's too long for Twitter, but it's W R A S L L I N Republic on Twitter. So make sure to go follow us there. Uh, on Threads, we're Wrestling Republic, uh, and on Twitch, we're Wrestling Republic as well. So make sure you follow uh, us on all of those places there. Me personally at Ben Allison Design on Instagram and uh, at W R Ben Allison uh on twitter and of course don't forget to subscribe here the all real wrestling podcast as well like and subscribe once again ben it was a true honor to have you on and don't forget guys just dm it says it right there on the bottom of this thing if you want graphics made obviously you know there's going to be a little bit of you know that, that that bread that green stuff but of course send him dms let this man get to work because he's doing amazing stuff and he needs Thank to be you. everywhere. I know I'm adding up to your plate, Ben, but you know, you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what DMs are gonna get there. But of course, yeah. like you said, like, comment, subscribe, and share with all your friends each day. Check out Russell Republic, 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. UK, 3 uh, p.m. Yeah. Eastern time. And of course, check out all wrestling podcasts. We have amazing interviews coming up. And I'm so excited because there's nothing to be happening if it wasn't for that man right that man right there. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time. You have a great one. Take care.